Good afternoon, people. Watch him at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe, that's the key word, believe in what Christ did at the cross, in what Christ did at the cross. In other words, if you believe in him, then you shall have eternal life. That's, that's the promise in the Bible. God is not slack on his promises. All of his promises are fulfilled. And are going to be fulfilled, including the rapture. How do you believe? You accept Christ as Savior. You admit you're a sinner in need of him. You put your faith and trust in him. You accept him as Savior and you're saved. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will seal you until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. He's your best friend. The Holy Spirit will change you. A lot of people don't believe that the rapture is going to happen because what they're seeing right now is actually nothing compared to what's coming after the rapture. It's going to be horrific. And it's what we're seeing is a precursor to what's coming. As long as the church is still here, the, rap, the uh, tribulation has not started. We are not subject to the tribulation, nor are we going to be going through it. What we're seeing is a precursor to what's coming. And if this is bad, uh, just imagine what it's going to be like after the rapture. I got to give you this article. This is off of the Jerusalem Post. Actually, I have two articles to give you. One is off of the Jerusalem Post, and this one is off of the Insider. Um, food, in, uh, food insecurity expert predicts there's only 10 weeks of wheat supplies left in the world as Russian invasion disrupts production. Um, this is bad. The world has only about 10 weeks of wheat supplies stored as Russia's invasion of Ukraine enters its fourth month. A food insecurity expert told the UN, Sarah Minker, the CEO of Agriculture Analytics from Grow Intelligence told the UN Secretary, uh, Security Council that the Russian-Ukraine war was not the cause of a food security crisis, but simply added fuel to a fire that was long burning. Ukraine is considered the world's breadbasket, and Russia and Ukraine combined account for almost a third of the world's wheat exports. This comes as U.S. Uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken accused Russia of using food as a weapon. Blinken also addressing the United Nations Security Council said that Russia was holding food hostage, not for um, Ukrainians, but for millions across the world. Well, the Russian government seems to think that using food as a weapon will help accomplish what is what what its envision or what its invasion has not to break the spirit of the Ukrainian people, Blinken said. What about the American people? This is starting to irritate me a lot because we're talking about over there, but we're not talking about over here. Minker said droughts across the world are contributing to declining wheat resources. Minker said global food supplies are also being impacted by... Uh, hmm, never mind. 
<laughs> Fertilizer shortages. <laughs> you can read what's what else is there. We currently have only 10 weeks, she said, of global consumption sitting in inventory around the world. Hmm. Wasn't it OCD? I call her OCD. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I call her OCD. That's what I call her. Didn't she say, oh, we only have so many years before we're dead or something like that? Yeah. Because of uh, what? Um, hmm, what's it called? I think it rhymes with climate change. Yeah. We currently have only 10 weeks. That's what she's saying here. Maker said estimates from official government agencies from across the world show that wheat inventories of 33% of annual consumption, but added the models uh, created by Grow Intelligence show that the figures may actually be closer to 20%, a level not seen since 2007 and 2008. So I'm going to link that in the description box. And I am also going to link this in the description box. And this just came from uh, the Jerusalem Post yesterday. Now, Russia declared a travel ban on 963 Americans. <laughs> 963 Americans. You know who those Americans include? Sleepy Joe and Blinken. <laughs> so, Foreign Minister uh, said that it has added 26 new names to a list of Canadians it has barred from traveling to Russia, including defense chiefs, defense industry executives, and <laughs> Sophie Trudeau. Well... How do you like that? Russia said on Saturday it had so far banned 963 Americans from entering the country. Including previously announced moves against Sleepy Joe and other top officials. And would continue to retaliate against what is called hostile U.S. actions. The largely symbolic travel bans from part of... Uh, Downward spiral in Russia's relations with the West since February 24th invasion of Ukraine has prompted Washington and its allies to impose drastic sanctions excuse me, on Moscow and step up arms supplies to Ukraine. Separately, the foreign minister said it added 26 new names to the list of Canadians it had barred from traveling to Russia, including defense chief, defense uh, industry executives, and Sophie uh, Trudeau, the wife of Prime Minister <laughs> Justin Trudeau. This is hilarious. This is really funny. Publishing the first list of banned Americans for the first time, the ministry said, we emphasize that the hostile actions taken by Washington, which boomerang against the United States itself, will continue to receive a proper rebuff. It said uh, Russian uh, counter sanctions were necessary response aimed at forcing and ruling American regime, which is trying to impose a neo-colonial rule based world order on the rest of the world to change its behavior, recognizing new geopolitical realities. Uh, previously announced names on the huge list include Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, <laughs> this is funny, and CIA Chief William Burns. The new Canadian list was published four days after Canada introduced a bill that would ban that after Canada introduced a bill that will ban Vladimir Putin and about a thousand members of his government and military from traveling there. It included uh, Jocelyn uh, Paul, Eric Kinney, uh, a few other names here. I'm going to link both of these in the description box. I, I just personally think they're funny. <laughs> I think this is really funny. Again, 
Everything that we're seeing now is a setup for the Antichrist. This is all being set up for the Antichrist. The church has no business here. And we're about to be gone soon. We're not going to be caught up in the time of Jacob's trouble. We're going to be caught up, all right, but it'll be before the time of Jacob's trouble arrive on this earth. My advice to you and anybody who's new watching this channel is to get saved. And it's simple. Believe in what Christ did for you at the cross. Admit you're a sinner and believe in what Christ did for you at the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. Once you're saved, you're justified by the blood of Jesus. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. Man makes it hard. But with God, all things are possible, especially salvation. My advice to you is to just to get saved. Because being saved comes with benefits. And one of those benefits includes the rapture. And people write me every single day telling me, oh, that's just wishful thinking. The rapture is not going to happen. Well, I tell you what, go back and play your role in The Walking Dead. Where there is no hope. Because the rapture is going to happen. The church is not subject to whatever is coming. And like I said earlier. The only reason, the only reason why all hell has not broken loose and evil has not been unleashed the way it's going to be is because we're still here. The church is still here. That's why. When the church is gone, then it's going to make the walking dead look like a picnic. Because it's going to be way worse than Holly, than well, I should say Hollywood could ever describe it. So, there you go. I'll link this in the description box. Last night I didn't come on because Kevin wasn't feeling good. He's got a he's got the same thing I got. So I passed it on to him. So he'll be fine. But anyway, I will be back later. And God bless. Thank you.